I find that if I build the scaffold, if I sort of lay the groundwork with sculpture to really lift and tighten underneath and really support the dermal matrix and that scaffold of the skin, then I can fine tune with the hyaluronic acid fillers. And that result is incredibly natural and beautiful. A lot of patients need to see their before photos because they, they look at the befores and they're like, oh my God, I can't even, I, didn't, I don't even remember looking like that because the transformation is sort of so slow and it's so gradual and it's so subtle. Hey guys, Dr. Mebo here. So this video is all about Sculptra and uh, this might be of interest if you are a patient, if you're thinking about getting Sculptra injections, um, but I will also make sure to answer some questions from you guys who send me questions who are interested in becoming Sculptra injectors. Um, Sculptra is one of my favorite fillers, so I'm really excited to share this information with you guys. So for those of you who don't know me, I am a board certified dermatologist. I am based in New York. I spend most of my days doing lots of the most cutting edge procedures, using devices, injectables, etc., to achieve a very natural aesthetic. And then I spend my evenings and afternoons um, researching and talking to you guys about uh, more of a holistic, integrative, comprehensive approach to the skin, which sometimes I have time to talk about in the office and sometimes I don't. But if you are interested in any of things, these things, whether they are sort of more the very cutting edge procedural aspects of dermatology, or if you're interested in more of the holistic, integrative, sort of inside out approaches to dermatology, then be sure to subscribe. And if you like this video, feel free to share it with anyone who you think would benefit. So what is Sculptra? Sculptra is one of my favorite fillers, but it's very different from the traditional fillers that you might have heard of, like Restylane, Juvederm, Belotero, etc. Those are in the category of what we call hyaluronic acid fillers. And Sculptra is sort of in its own category, um, and it's considered a biostimulatory filler, meaning that it actually stimulates your own collagen production. Um, so it works totally differently from the other fillers. It actually takes a little bit more time to see the results. So you have to be a little bit more patient with it. Um, it actually takes about three months from the time that I inject someone until we see the full effect of the, those Sculptra injections. Um, because what it's doing is it's actually telling your own body to make more collagen. So it's relying on your own cells, your own fibroblasts to actually respond to the Sculptra. And that's also one of the reasons why the results are incredibly natural looking. Um, so I personally in my practice use a lot of, um, of combination filler approaches. I find that if I build the scaffold, if I sort of lay the groundwork with Sculptra to really lift and tighten underneath and really support the dermal matrix and that scaffold of the skin, then I can fine tune with the hyaluronic acid fillers. And that result is incredibly natural and beautiful. What happens the day that you come to the office if you're thinking about getting Sculpture that day? Normally, um, my staff would put some numbing, some topical numbing cream on the skin, and we sort of confirm how many vials we're injecting that day. So I'll go in and I'll, I'll, I'll look at the skin and my patients know this, I'm constantly sort of lifting and, and placing my hand in different places on the skin and sort of making small subtle movements there because I wanna know, okay, if I put a little, a little bit here, what kind of vector is that gonna create? Is that going to lift and tighten the nasal labial and the marionette area? What if I put a little drop right in front of the earlobe? Is that gonna tighten up the jawline? You know, if I put a little bit into the temple, and I sort of put it right there, is that gonna lift the tail of the brow just a millimeter or two? So, you know, first when I come in the room and, and I, I sort of look and I assess where that patient is at that moment, and I make sort of a strategic recommendation regarding, you know, how many vials of sculpture do we need that day? I usually inject only one or two. I know some of my colleagues inject a lot more. I'm a very conservative injector. I'd rather do less and have the patient come back and say, I love it, I just want more. Um, I don't believe in sort of overdoing things um, and having a, a huge transformation that's sort of, you know, sudden and too dramatic for the patient. Um, so I'll 
do that, do that, you know, that, that little assessment at the beginning. I'll have an honest conversation with the patient about what I recommend for them. And then I give my staff the go ahead to start reconstituting the Sculptra. So for those of you who are injecting Sculptra, Sculptra is a lot more technically challenging to inject than the, the traditional hyaluronic acid fillers. So when you inject like a Juvederm or Restylane, you basically open up the container that it comes in, everything's obviously sterile, and you um, basically take the hub of the syringe, you attach it to the hub of the needle, you're ready to inject. Done, right? With Sculptra, it's a lot more complicated than that because Sculptra comes in sort of a powder form. It's a suspension. So what you need to do is you need to actually reconstitute it even a few days prior to seeing that patient with sterile water. And you need to let it sit for a little while, which sort of softens up the little powder. So that then when the patient's ready, that's when you can blend in your lidocaine and really be ready to go. And you start then that's when you really start sort of mixing the sculpture, mixing that suspension. And you have to be very quick and you have to be very fluid with anterograde and retrograde motions with your syringe or else it's going to clog. And I think that's where a lot of dermatologists, plastic surgeons, uh, injectors sometimes get a little bit frustrated, a little bit nervous, a little bit scared around sculpture because they've had that experience where if they're not really fluid and really good at the motions and then and, and the reconstitution process, it'll clog on them. And, and there's the patient, you know, already anxious because they're getting needles in their face. And there's the injector who's, uh, you know, jabbing the patient repeatedly and finding that the syringe isn't moving and it's all of a sudden, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna get it out? What do I, how do I troubleshoot this? And if you've had that experience once, you know, sometimes that can be uh, it can give you enough PTSD that you're just like, oh, sculpt is just too complicated. I can't deal with it. Personally, I'm one of the top sculptor injectors and I can tell you that it is worth mastering this art. It is one of the most incredible fillers. Like I'll see people who just genuinely think that they need plastic surgery or they feel like oh, these other fillers are gonna look too artificial and I've seen my friends and they look so overfilled. And when I do a combination of Sculptra to just lift and tighten and build that scaffold and then I fine tune with the hyaluronic acid, it is just game changing. I'm sorry, I'm getting so excited, but like I love this product so much um, and I'm not being paid for this. I'm not a spokesperson, like this is, honestly what I what I really genuinely believe so when I you know when I train uh dermatologists plastic surgeons and I, I I've done a lot of you know in-person trainings where I'm actually helping to move their fingers and push the syringe with them and reconstitute with them and assess the patients with them and either on the stage or I'll walk around um you know in a conference setting it seems daunting at first but if you can find and recruit some friends, family, and you can learn the technique and you can master it to the point that you get confident enough that when you're in that room with that patient, you know you're gonna be able to use the product in a way that's not painful, not gonna embarrass you because it starts to clog. Um, it will change your practice and change your patient's experience. Okay, so now the patient is numb. My staff goes in, they wipe the patient down with Hibiclens. You know, everything should be very antiseptic. And then I come in with the reconstituted Sculptra. I'm sort of moving it around and there's really no time for conversation at that point. Um, you wanna really answer, have, if you're the patient, you want all your answers, all your questions answered before the doctor comes in with the Sculptra. If you are the injector, you wanna make sure that all of those questions are answered before you walk in because if you stand there with a syringe and you hold it and you start answering questions, uh, it's gonna clog, okay? So you're, and your patient's not gonna see the results. You're not gonna see the results, so disaster. So you walk in, ready to go. And I, I right now, because of COVID, my patients have their mask off and they're actually not allowed to speak when my staff is in the room uh, because my staff is just wearing regular surgical masks, right? I'm wearing a whole PAPR unit. You guys who follow me on Instagram, you know I'm like all dressed up, right? But my staff is not quite as protected um, and so the rule is with my, with my patients, when I come in, 
the patients can't speak because that increases the risk of my staff. And so I say to the patient, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to talk at you. <laughs> you know, you're not allowed to speak back. If you have a question or concern, please raise your hand. I'll send my staff out and I will address your questions. Um, but I'm going to be talking at you this whole time. And so I'll sort of be, you know, walking around the patient, injecting anterograde, retrograde, putting these threads, right? all over the face. I'll be putting a little bit over here. Sometimes I put a drop in the nasal labial. Sometimes I put a little bit right in front of the earlobe. Sometimes I put a little bit into the temple. I tend to prefer lateral injections. I don't like too many medial injections. I find that these make the face look very heavy, a little bit simian. Um, so I'll do all of these injections. And as I inject, your eyes can feel a little bit twitchy, almost like you're blinking a lot. Um, sometimes you, you, or half of your face will feel very numb. Even if I'm injecting up here, sometimes your lip feels numb. So all of these feelings can be very weird and very strange. So, you know, I talk people through that and explain, you know, it's the lidocaine. It's, it's I'm, I'm mixing it with lidocaine. And so if you've ever been to the dentist, like sometimes just things feel bigger and they feel really numb and it's a very strange feeling. So as I go through that, you may feel like your eyes a little bit heavier, like you're blinking. Um, you may feel when I inject here, there's a nerve that comes out of here and it actually feeds the upper lip over here. So you may be like, wait a second, why does my lip feel numb? She's not even injecting my lip. Um, so don't be nervous. All of those sensations are normal. And then your face does look a little bit full because if you think about it, I'm putting in water mixed with the lidocaine, mixed with the Sculptra. So you get this sort of false sense of fullness right after the procedure, but that water is then gonna be absorbed into your bloodstream and you're basically gonna pee it out over the subsequent hours after your injection. So by the, that night or the next morning, you're sort of underwhelmed. It's like, where did it all go? <laughs> I just spent all this money, you know, in Dr. Bo's office and my face looks back to the way that it looked before I even got there. And that's because what it's done is it's now basically sprinkled. We sort of deposited those sculpture molecules in the deeper layers of the skin and all the water and lidocaine has been absorbed, flushed out, peed out. And now over the next three months, those little molecules are going to wake up and stimulate your own collagen producing cells. Now here's where sculpture injections get a little bit um, more labor intensive for the patient um, because you have to do some homework. So we recommend five minutes of massage five times a day for five days. I do the first massage for my patients in the office. Um, and I do a pretty a pretty um, robust massage. I don't expect my patients to massage as aggressively as I am because remember, they're numb. So I'm like, I'm going to town, right? Um, massage is actually amazing for the face. And I have a lot of patients who, after they finish their five minutes, five times a day for five days of sculpture massage, um, have come to me and said to me, you know, even though I didn't have to keep going, I still massage uh, my moisturizer in at night because I feel like even just the massage is healthy for my skin. And I think it's an amazing form of self-care as well. You know, if you can sort of get into that habit and sort of breathe and just, you know, take your moisturizer and give yourself a massage, direction doesn't matter so much regardless of what you guys may read. Really just giving yourself a nice massage on a regular basis every day while you're rubbing in some of your moisturizers, obviously not the ones with like retinoids in them or alpha hydroxy acids and those are too irritating. You don't wanna massage those into the skin. But if you're talking about like a hyaluronic acid serum or a moisturizer with prebiotics and other you know, hydrators and really soothing calming ingredients, Absolutely, by all means, you know, go for that massage. Um, and a lot of my sculpture patients have become massage enthusiasts because of that. So three months later, we then assess, okay, let's see how the sculpture did. A lot of patients need to see their before photos because they, they look at the befores and they're like, oh my God, I can't even, I, didn't, I don't even remember looking like that because the transformation is sort of so slow and it's so gradual and it's so subtle. And then, you know, we can add. Each time we add Sculptra, it's like turning back the clock a little bit, right? And then the patient will say to me like, ah, stop. I'm happy, I love it, freeze me in time. Like, then we go into maintenance. So at the beginning, it may be more expensive, there may be more visits. You know, I can use anywhere between one and six vials per patient, depending on what their goals are. You know, but then, you know, after all those intervals, every three, three months or so, sometimes I'll put in one vial, sometimes I'll put in two vials, come back in three months, let's see how you look. And then at some point, the patient's really happy. And then either we, if we're just doing Sculptra, then we'll continue Sculptra every, um, every, either it's two vials once a year or one vial every six months for maintenance is the typical maintenance schedule for Sculptra. 
Um, so it's, it's a lot less expensive when you go into maintenance. For my patients who want to then fine tune with sugar gels or hyaluronic acid, what I'll do is we'll sort of stop the sculpture and I'll say, you know what, okay, you really could use a little bit of Restylane or Bellaterra on the tear trough, or you could really use a little bit of Volbella for the lip lines, or um, you know, you could really use a little bit more um, of a beautiful um, uh, high cheekbone, and I want to do that with a little bit of Voluma. You know, so I'll sort of fine tune with the hyaluronic acid fillers, and um, I'll do a whole other video on those at some point. But um, the Sculptra maintenance is pretty easy. Again, it's either two vials once a year or one vial every six months. There's so much more to talk about when it comes to Sculptra. Um, so if you guys have any questions, please ask them below. I will answer them. Please share it with any friends or family members who are thinking about fillers or um, you know, have been sort of turned off by certain aspects of fillers and maybe this is something that they'd be much more open to considering or somebody who's thinking about surgery because I think a lot of people um, can really put off surgery if they have um, the right injector and the right dermatologist in their lives. If you have any other topics that you want me to cover, then of course, let me know that as well. But until then, stay safe, be well, and um, I will speak to you soon.